Here I'd like to give you a high-level overview of all the different uh, things you can do from the BizTalk programs. So basically, if you were to click Start Programs, you would see Microsoft BizTalk Server 2006. And then everything that I have basically right here, uh, I'm showing you just a slightly different view to force it to be on the screen where my video can get to it. So um, normally you just hit Start Programs, Microsoft, and you would click one of these items. What I did to get this screen is I just came here, I did a right click open, and it basically opened it in uh, Windows Explorer, and then you see all the different shortcuts here. So I want to talk about each one of these and what it does. Let's start with uh, BAM Portal website. BAM stands for Basic, sorry, Business Activity Monitoring, and this is a, a website tool with IIS that shows you historical data, for instance, or business related data that you must first collect in BizTalk before you can show it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working on a new set of BAM videos that will be an advanced set that will be available on my website. Okay, so BAM, first of all, is not limited to BizTalk. In general, it's an industry term that goes along with BPM, Business Process Management. And it's a way that users can actually see their data. And we'll show this actually in a future video, but just to give you a very quick overview Let's go down here to orders, and I'm not sure I actually have the data loaded right now, but this is kind of like an end user tool where the user can say, I want to see the customer name, I want to see the state we shipped to, I want to see the date we received it or the date we shipped it, and I want to see the how much it was for and the number of the customer. And then you can basically click the execute query button and it goes out to a database or a cube, one or the other, and it produces a report like this. And so this is, again, kind of a nice feature that's basically built into BizTalk to help you produce these sort of end-user reports. They have their limits, but it's also very useful. And you could also use SQL reporting services to create your own more fancy reports against the same data. Okay, so you can see here all the different fake companies I made up and different dates and amounts and so on. Okay, so that's BAM, which is again a website. Now we have BizTalk Server Admin Console, which uh, we we had a, a overview video just a f like three videos before this where we talked only about this utility. Actually, I think I have it open already here. So this is that utility. Basically, on the left, you have your BizTalk Server, your BizTalk Group, and then you have Applications. And earlier we drilled down to the purchase order application and we looked at some of the orchestrations and saw they were started or stopped. And then we looked at some of the send ports. You know, you, if, there, if one is disabled, it's real obvious here. Well, I don't know why I can't. Oh, because the orchestrations are enabled. But anyway, I can enable one of these to show you. So you can see it's red there, so that one's disabled right now. And you can sort here based on the different names. And here you can see how many BizTalk hosts you have running, which are your Windows services. You can start and stop them and restart them here. You have a tie to your event viewer where you can check out your errors. And then at the very top you have a little reporting facility where you call the Group Hub. And then from here you can click on any one of these reports and then click Run and you'll get a little report here if you have any of that data available. So these reports are not end-user reports. This is more developer and administrative reports that show you how many orchestrations are running right now or how many messages have been suspended and that type of thing. So one of the other utilities then, I'm going to skip around a little here. I'm going to go to HAT, Health and Activity Tracking. Okay, so here's HAT. One of the most common queries you'll do, again, probably 90% of the time, is just you're just going to go to Queries and you're going to click on Most Recent 100 service instances. And then in the future videos I'll show you how you can modify that to actually get 5,000 instead of 100. And you click on that and it's going to go read a database and basically build another report on the screen. And this report is very detailed of ev basically every message that passes through BizTalk. So you can, uh, let me just give you an example here. I'm going to scroll back here. This was actually a few days ago when I was doing some kind of testing. So you see all these have the same date, 209. So what I did is I actually dropped in a batch of files. And uh, so at 2.09, actually 2.05, I think, the file was received. I don't know why it took four minutes, but from here to here, 
it split and debatched that file and it created roughly eight or nine orders and then the, all those orders started running various orchestrations so you can see right here then like eight or nine orchestrations all got started and then you can also see the pipelines and then when the messages got transmitted or whatever and then here we actually called an inventory check orchestration to see if those items were in inventory and that just depends upon how many items the person actually ordered so you can see everything basically that happened at 209 here was a result of one file that I dropped into the system and you can actually click here and you can zoom in by right clicking and saying message flow and the message flow shows you a slightly more detailed view and you can actually kind of pop around from one message to the other the other thing you can do here if you have everything set up properly is you can say save all tracked messages and you pick a file on the disk where I've already set up one here called BizTalk Demos Hat Saved Messages. And when you click that, it looks at the one line where you have the cursor and it saves that message to the disk. And it usually saves two different files. One is the context of the message or the metadata and the other is the actual XML data itself. So that's basically the hat utility in a nutshell. Okay, back to here, the BizTalk server configuration. The person who installs BizTalk will use this program and you know I know sometimes the developers will install BizTalk on their own computers in which case you'll need to learn this in other cases you know maybe your admins will install BizTalk for you and you'll never actually use the administrator utility. I will perhaps be doing an administrative view of BizTalk as a separate product in the future and that would teach the uh, admin guys how to install and run and monitor BizTalk. And so here, these are all the different components of BizTalk, you know, like what databases they require. Some of these screens take just a little while to go pull in all the data. And so you can see here, here's the names of all my databases. Um, BAM took a lot of a setup here, which we'll talk about in the, in the BAM videos. We'll go very detailed as to how to set up BAM using this utility. And then if you want to turn on the EDI, for instance, I don't have that, I don't think, enabled right now, then you would have to, uh, so you can, you can install various pieces. Like right now, I don't have the EDI installed. So if I wanted to install it, I would have to come here and click Enable, and then I might have to specify a database name or user ID, you know, various parameters, depending upon what that service requires. So I'm going to cancel out of that and exit, no changes. You do, of course, have your BizTalk server documentation, which is basically the fancy version of the help files. I remember when BizTalk 2004 first came out, they didn't even have the help files for like two months after the product was RTM released to manufacture. And that was kind of a nightmare. So now we have nice help files. You have the table contents here. Just use these tabs at the bottom. And then you have the index where you can type in, for instance, BAM and then there's a search facility you have to come up here and click search I'm sorry in this case it was already open and then right here I could type in like XPath and either hit enter or click search again this is kind of a small screen but here's a list of things that match that search and again this is loading data from a data uh, from a database help file here on my own computer so it's pretty fast. So that's the help file. Then we're not going to cover the publishing wizards. We have the business rule composer. Let's open that. We'll briefly talk about that. A very simple example we will do in the videos uh, in the intro part of this course. So I just resize this so it all fit here on your video screen. Um, basically, uh, business rules are called policies, business rule policies, and you can have many different policies deployed on your computer. And then it has to keep track of every version of every policy. So uh, actually, once you've deployed a policy, you can't even change it. So what you have to do is uh, copy these policies forward, and then every time you copy them forward, it automatically creates a version history for you. Obviously, we'll talk about that when we get to those appropriate videos. So here's a policy called PO Trace Policy, and here's the most recent version. And then here are three different rules. In this case, you can see here my rule. This is almost like XPath, right? So it says, if using this schema, you find that environment is equal to test, then I want you to basically fill in these actions. 
If, however, the environment is QA, which is this rule, then set these actions. And if the environment is production, I then want to use these actions. So this is one way you can configure your system using business rules, but they, they also have many more advanced features, which would be a whole other CD to cover that. And I don't know if there's enough demand for that CD at this time, maybe in the future. So this is the business rule policy. Down here, you can specify vocabularies where you make up your own terminology. So for instance here, instead of calling this by the XPath name, you can actually create a shortcut name for it that would be more user friendly. I think the idea was that this tool might actually be used by end users, but in the real world I don't think that's realistic. So I just like the XPath myself. You can also come down here and point to an XML schema and you would browse to your disk and find it and then basically it would show you the schema here and then you can drag and drop the element names onto these sections over here. So basically you have three rules here. The rule is displayed at the top of the screen which is an if statement and there is no else with business rules. It's always a positive. If this is true then do these actions and you can actually assert other rules. Right here you can say um, sorry. Oh, this one, I can't change it because it's already been deployed. So if I were in a new rule, I could actually do more things than what I can do right here. But you can actually assert other rules when one rule is true. So that's, again, high-level view of business rule system, business rule composer. Then there's a little deployment wizard that basically lets you import and export your business rules. You could, you could use this when you go from test to production or if you just want to copy business rules from your machine to another developer's machine. We already talked about HAT. Again, normally everybody just calls this HAT, Health and Activity Tracking. Human Server Admin. Most people don't use this and I would recommend at this time you don't because basically Microsoft then came out with uh, the Workflow Foundation which is part of .NET 3.0 and so I think in, uh, more people are starting to use that type of technology than the technology that came out in BizTalk 2004. So it's very kind of advanced and most people have never used that. Um, then we have the tracking profile editor. This is a BAM tool. So if you're not using BAM, don't need to worry about this one. I've centered this on the screen for your video and I'm going to open a file that uh, I was doing and for the BAM video just for example, let me find one here. These are called BTT files. If you see a BTT on disk, it's actually a TPE. And this stands for Tracking Profile Editor. And so you actually see your orchestrations on the right part of the screen. And you can actually pick your orchestrations here and add different ones to it. Then what you do is you map shapes over here in your orchestration to your BAM elements. So these BAM elements here are actually defined in an Excel spreadsheet. They're then deployed to a special database and then you can map, almost like a BizTalk map, but a little easier actually, you can map milestones, which is when a message arrives, over here to this little clock, which means this is a date time milestone. You can also then open a message here and say show me the payload or the schema. And then from there, you can see all the elements in the schema. And then you can see here like PO number, how it highlighted that. So the PO number from this message is going to be saved in the, the BAM database. And by the way, the BAM database we showed a while ago was this uh, BAM portal website. So the data being collected is collected like this. And then it's, you're able to display it using the BAM portal. So basically we've covered here briefly what every one of these utilities is so that you're, you are now familiar with them.